Thanks for joining us for Understanding Real Estate with Realtor Becky Cobb of West Cobb Alliance, part of the Reese Nichols Real Estate Group in the Neosho. Well, welcome back, Becky. And I know it's an election year that can make everything go a little bit wonky. What's it doing to the housing market? Well, all of us agents have been talking, and we certainly do see somewhat of a decline the last few weeks. Uh, election years, we always know to brace that there could be some difficulties and some slowdown of the market. This year's no different. Redfin did a survey, and this would be nationwide, says that typically about 23% of first-time home buyers say that they're going to wait till after election day to buy. They're just uncertain, and so they're just holding off and putting the pause button on. Uh, history also shows that sales tend to rebound after the election year is over and may increase as much as 82% during the next year. So we may see a little bit of a downtrend right now, but it's not going to last. One of the local lenders recently told me that they're expecting to see a large number of refis from December through March. So slow now, but it's not going to stay that way. Oh, that's good to hear. So Becky, tell us, how should you price your home for a quick sale? Well, if you really, truly want a quick sale, you certainly don't price it ten, twenty thousand over what your realtor recommends. You want to come in on the low side for a quick sale. And one of the benefits we've seen in the last few years is if you're a little bit on the low side when you price your property, you're more apt to get multiple offers. Multiple offers will drive the price up. Quick sale, if you're serious about it, we got to get rid of this. We don't want to do any repairs. Whatever your motivation is for getting it gone, you don't price it high. You price it low and you listen to your professional real estate agent who will give you guidance based on the current market values for your area. So this morning, Becky, tell us about how open houses benefit sellers. It's funny you would ask that question because I've just had that conversation with some of my sellers multiple times this week. I will say one of the biggest advantages is we're going to focus a little bit more on extra advertising for our sellers during the week leading up to an open house. So that is one thing. You're going to be in the market more. You're going to be more on social media, more visible. So that's great. The other thing is sometimes Sometimes the people that are going to come through your house, they're going to be the neighbors. They're going to be just curious people, but that's okay because those people will talk to other people. So it's rare that we're going to find the buyer for your house during an open house, but an open house can certainly increase your visibility in the marketplace and get people talking. And that's what we need. We need people talking about your property so that we can get it sold as quickly as possible. So, Becky, if you're trying to sell your house, how can you enhance the curb appeal? You know, curb appeal is very, very important. You imagine driving by a house, and what you see on the outside is you see chippy paint, you see maybe old furniture, a car up on blocks. No one wants to go into that house. It could be gorgeous on the inside. So you really have to take a critical look at the outside of your home and take into consideration what someone may see if they just decide to drive by your home. I can't tell you how many times I've had someone drive by a house and they said, no, we don't want that. Doesn't look like it would be right for us. And I know it would be great for you. So making sure that windows are clean, uh, seasonal uh, flowers, or you were getting close to Christmas, you know, nice, classy decorations. Don't go overboard with too many twinkling lights, but a few that could be really nice. So you want to make sure things look sharp. Also, this time of year, keeping the yard raked and uh, it just needs to look nice and neat. And that is like the first welcome you're giving someone to come into your home. Well, sometimes you see a listing that says rent to own. What does that mean? Usually that's going to be a very rare listing in our current market, um, Luke, but people do ask, buyers will ask us, I just want to rent to own. Usually what I think that means is you probably haven't been to a bank or to a mortgage broker to see if you can purchase and you're assuming that rent to own is the only way you're going to be able to. Uh, Truthfully, on a rent to own, 
they're going to ask you for a fairly large down payment anywhere probably from 10 to 20 percent of the asking price of the property and uh, then you're going to you know if most people can't even get through that process and then you're going to be making a monthly payment and if you mess up you might get kicked out and you have very little recourse uh, to fight that we do have uh, some situations in the area where people think they're buying a home and really it's just glorified rent so my advice always is don't assume that you can't purchase a home we have very good lenders in the area that can help you Uh, figure out how you can get your credit score up or whatever it is that's hindering you to prepare to purchase a home and the rent to own that's really very dangerous for you you very likely can put a lot of money into something and then in the end not have anything to show for it if you would like to know more about understanding real estate you may contact becky cobb at 417-592-3245 of the West Cobb Alliance, your Realtors for Life. Find out more on the web at neoshow.homes.